I just met Matt, and the coolest thing is we just realized that we both have Aussie doodles. Hi. Oh, hey, friends forever. Friends forever. Where are you? Okay, where first you at? LSAT tip, get an Aussie doodle. So yeah, that's the key to scoring in the high 160s, 170s, is getting an Aussie doodle. It's no, it's the new tip on the market. Because this is what they look like you no matter what you do. If you score a 150, a 130, a 170, they just, they love you all the same and it's perfect. Exactly. <laughs> so, besides having an Aussie doodle, can you tell me a little bit more about yourself, Matt? Yeah, sure. So, um, I graduated from UC Berkeley in 2018 and then um, wanted to go to law school and was studying for the LSAT and did all right. Um, hit like the low, started out in the one, my first attempt was I think a 147 and then went 149. For that attempt? Um, I had studied like maybe a little bit, but I was in school at the time. So I hadn't like really committed myself to it too much. I think I had like gone through, honestly, I think I'd gone through like one book kind of started to go through the materials, getting comfortable. And then I took the summer and was like, I'm gonna hit this really hard. And then I studied like every day. I got up to a 161 and then it wasn't enough. So I studied, I kept studying, studied, studied, studied. A couple months later, um, took the test again and my score went down, 157. And- How did you respond to that? Yeah, it sucked. I was so upset. I like, had worked so hard. It felt like such a setback to put everything like really blood, sweat and tears every day at the library trying to get my score up and my score went down. Um, Between that one, was it 161 to when you dropped at 157, what were you doing to study? That? Like obviously you were putting in a lot of time. Were you, do you feel like you were studying effectively or? I do, I think I got a, I think, I think that, I think that it's, it's really easy to convince yourself that you're doing better than you are. Like you can take a practice test and maybe give yourself an extra minute and things like that. And, oh, you know, I, I just want to answer this one last question or, you know, tell yourself like, oh, well, you know, if I didn't just mess up that one game, I would have done better. So I'm going to redo this section and see how I do. And th just those little things. Um, just being really honest with myself probably would have helped to show that, you know, there's some key areas. And um, I think looking back, what I hear you saying is like also how hard it is to put together a perfect test where yes, you might just mess up this game and normally you don't mess up this game, but normally how hard it is to not like seriously mess one of the sections up is very difficult. How often- Something's gonna go wrong yeah. every time. Something will always go wrong. And I, even on my official test, something went wrong and I still scored like in the 170s, but it's because I, my practice test, my score was below my practice test. I know not everybody is that case, but Typically, I agree with you on that completely. Things go wrong. It's not, and I think um, looking back, I think the biggest difference that I, that I really wish I understood was that the the easy questions or the easier questions count for just as many points as the hard questions. So there's, it's so important to get those fundamentals down. And it's like, there's just a difference between having them down, like, does it take you two minutes and you feel good? Or is it like instant, like 30 seconds or less where you can really get these questions like it's nothing. And I think I didn't understand that that should maybe be the goal for some of the, some of the earlier material on the, on the test. And if you get those, you know, one through 10 logical reasoning questions down that fast, um, the later stuff comes. But you say that I just I tell my students that you should not get more than one of the first 12 wrong. You really shouldn't get any wrong, but I'm not going to you're still ready to move on if you're getting one wrong. Like we need to fix that mistake. But if you're getting more than that, it's either an accuracy issue or you're going too fast. Yeah. And I just assigned homework that was I want you to do a section and I just want you to do one through 15 and just see what happens, because that's where we're really going to see what level you're at. Like you should be getting 14, yeah. 13, right? Definitely. Or else we're not ready to move on. Yeah, yeah, people get so caught up in these later questions and it's like, that's how you, that's how they're separating out the 170 scores. Like, you don't have to worry about sorting out those late questions until the, the, the early stuff is... Isn't it on the LSAT flex, you only have to get 17 or 18 right per section to get a 160? I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I took a flex on my last one. But then, I guess to finish up my journey was um, 161 and then kept studying, hit a 164, kept studying, hit a 167, kept studying, hit a 169. So if your score goes down, push through, you can keep going. How did you regroup after that? Like what did, like how did, how did you not quit? 
I took some time off. I did a lot of Sudoku, which was kind of funny. I don't know if that helped, um, but... I grew up doing Sudoku and I love games, so... <laughs> yeah, games are really tough for me. Um, just going back to the drawing board, doing, doing easy games and realizing that I needed to get them down way faster, way, way, way faster. I think that was really an inspiration for this app was like, all these yeah, games. Repetition. The goal of, so Matt obviously increased his score significantly and now he's developed an app. So can you tell us a little bit about your app? Yeah, so I mean, primarily LSAT growth is what it's called. LSAT growth's goal is to increase access to professional LSAT prep um, and increase scholarship equity for law schools. So you all know that there's a lot of uh, scholarship to be had for these law schools. And it just seemed to me like the people getting the scholarships were um, people with a lot more resources than others. And I just didn't think that was fair. And um, I noticed that, you know, I when I was tutoring that there were people coming to me saying that they didn't have a they didn't have a laptop. They were on their phone. Like so I realized there's a there's a serious need um, for just phone based LSAT prep. And there's a couple things out there, but I know they're really expensive. And so, um, yeah, I, w I wanted to make something that like people could really use. And also just when I was like as a tutor, um, people needed materials mm -hmm. like it, there's there's the prep tests but like just good kind of grab and go here do do a couple questions at a time kind of stuff that was fun and motivating um that wasn't going to be like super crazy expensive so right now everything um everything's free in the app and that's just because i'm keep writing questions so as i keep pumping out material and trying to you know have people use it and like it and um, what have been your feedback so far people really like it so far um i think that it's i think it's been good i think people uh, people are happy with it i just want to keep getting it out there and let people have a different way to study and um i guess like trying to make it more grab and go friendly so when we started the logic games were just like a normal logic game where you would need um pen and paper on the side to draw the game out and now um in the next update we'll have kind of some like flashcard games and things like that where it's just asking you to you know you'll have like an ordering chain and it'll say does someone have to go you know can, can this person go in spot number three or something like that if so, you were riding on the subway or something on your way to work it'd be much easier to still get some studying in without having to have like your pen and paper out that's awesome yeah i just think that you just take the fundamentals really do take a while on this test and so just to be able to sneak it in on a lunch break or something like that i know that there's a lot of people working there's a lot of people with kids there's a lot of people who need really accessible LSAT prep. And, and so that's even those that are scoring 160s, some of the students that come to some of my classes are those that you'd be shocked that they're coming to my back to the basics classes are those that are scoring 165 because they know they know the back to the basics, but they need a refresher because they want to get faster. And it sounds mm -hmm. like your app would be great for people that, yeah, they know what they're doing, but at the end of the day, like it needs, it, they know it, but it needs to become second, second instinct, like you said, like instant. And that, yeah, it's weird how it's such a speed related thing. And so actually like some of the functionality, we haven't we haven't polished it up as much as I'd like, but um, if you get all the questions right on the traditional logic games that we have in there, you actually get a place, you get a percentile, just like the LSAT. We'll, we'll tell you how fast you are compared to other people. So the vision is to really, um, you know, get this like a competitive leaderboard that everybody can it's like It's like dictionary.com where I do like the, like if you know the words you have to like, or how to spell it. Okay, I do like spelling tests online for like silliness. And you have to type it and how quickly you type it in. And I'm like motivated by the competition because then it gives you a score and then it ranks you every day. Like yeah. I'm so like, I, I'm too old to be still doing spelling tests, but I'm like, or it's like Temple Run, like yeah, <laughs> but, but exactly. That, that should Temple be Temple Run goal. for LSAT. That's the goal. That should be the. Goal. That's awesome. So where are you at now? Or I guess how? Yes, where are you at now? And how does that pair with your app development and the work that you're doing there? Because I'm sure it's hard to balance both. Um. Yes. Yeah, so I I mainly write the questions for the app. So I have a I work with a developer to to get it to have um, coded, and then right now. Um, so I was one of those success success stories from the LSAT, I guess. I, I took a scholarship to Emory Law. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm now in Atlanta. And then um, I was offered a spot in the MBA JD joint degree. So I'm actually in business school right now, which is weird because I never thought I was going to go to business school. I took the LSAT to go to law school. but um, So it's a joint degree program. And so I'll start. Did they reach out to you to do this? Or did yeah. you? That's awesome. 
so they reached out. out a dual because some people are truly seeking out dual degrees. Yeah, I, th I thought it was really interesting. I'm, I have interest in business, but um, they reached out and said, "Hey, you know, apply to this program with Justin LSAT score." And I said, "All right, why, why not?" And so, um, yeah, so I started that this year, and then next year I will start in the law program. And I guess I just for my reading, it's more versatile. If you have both degrees, it's a little easier to get a job as a lawyer if you have the, the business background too. So, is that the kind yeah. of is that the kind of law that you would like to go into? Well, actually, the, the inspiration for LSAT growth, the growth part, is uh, I really love the environment. And so environmental law is really my passion and what I'd like to go pursue. Um, maybe own a firm someday, you know, have my own law firm or something like that. So it's kind of the business stuff. But some percentage of proceeds from this app, if, um, if we end up really putting out a paid course, would go to planting trees. So we put some money there. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's cool that you get to, I think what's so interesting with the LSAT is I have a, I have a, like a marketing firm and my this um, individuals that work on the marketing side are like, the LSAT is such a niche market, but it's cool when you get to bring in um, other things that you're passionate about and like it's relatable to the LSAT. Cause like when you're taking the LSAT, it's your entire life, right? Yeah. And that's something that these students are really recognizing. Um, so I guess my last question then is just, if you were going back to start over, what would you have done differently on your studying? Would you have done any, if you would have done anything differently? Yeah, yeah. I was really hesitant to redo logic games. Um, and well, that's what I should really say. This was the, the inspiration was I had an Excel spreadsheet tracking my times on games because it wasn't just about doing a game. It was mm -hmm. about doing it and then doing it again. And so I made it a game for myself. Like, could I do this faster than I did it last time? And so that was where this came from really it was like, I want to know, like, did I get more questions wrong? Did I do this game actually faster than last time? And so really hammering out, getting those times down um, and then conditional logic, like you really cannot mm -hmm. get around it. Knowing those sufficient and necessary conditions and how those all relate, it's a, it's a really good place to to stay. Um, it also reminds me of like Babbel, like I do like the Spanish app where it's like, um, it shows you a picture, you have to click it, then sometimes you have to say it, and sometimes you have to type it, sometimes you have to, the word, but with conditional, like, can you do it that quickly? We're like, okay, if, if only if is, like, what does only if introduce? What does if introduce? Mm -hmm. What does unless introduce? And just getting that, if you can do that fast, where it's like, so something, important. They're like flash, it's like flashcards for uh, multiplication facts. <laughs> and it's like, it's hard, like, I know it's so hard to go through it, but those are like the key, things to study to really push your score for. You know, it's like, it, it really can be, I think that conditional logic stuff, it's almost like going back to sitting through a math class again in high school or something like that, where you really just don't want to be there sometimes, but that's what makes the difference, I think, is really that, that those conditional logic skills um, can be huge. And the other thing I should say, so we do have a, we partnered with a test prep company called Velocity LSAT. You can actually look up any LSAT question and there's a video answer in the app. So that's the paid, like the paid course. Um, so you can look up, you know, the flower shop game from test 88 or test That was the test, test that I took on the test. That was my official Oh, that's the main one. Yeah, that's a tough one. I, ha I had the game section the first section of the day too. Oh, this is my first game I studied my butt off trying to score a 170. It was heartbreaking because after the first section, I knew I wasn't getting a 170. But if you are studying and you know your stuff, if if you if you, if you think something's hard, everybody else thinks it's hard too. And yeah. You have, to, you have to breathe and move on to the next section. Yeah. If not, it's, you're gonna crush your score. And like, yes, you might not be getting a 170, but go for that one, you know, three or, or whatever score it is for you. Do your next best because it's going to at least help you for the experience. Yeah. And that was really good advice that I had because I wanted to cry after my first section. <laughs> yeah, and I guess going back to like what to do differently, Timed sections are fine once you're at that level. Like people overthink doing entire tests and you just, I don't think you really need to do a whole test. I think Especially it burns you with out. the flex. Yeah, yeah. Because, well, no, I, I, don't think you, I don't think you have to do full tests on the regular. The reason that I would recommend people doing full tests is just sitting still for that long is hard and you have mm -hmm. to have that stamina, but three sections is significantly shorter than five sections. Yeah, and when I when I was in the 160s, when I was going 167 and trying to go up, I don't think I sat and did an entire test after that, like at all. I think I just did timed sections because I knew like if I was getting the section scores better, then 
on and test it depends, the How many hours a day were you studying though? Because it depends on, you're just doing one time section and review a day and only sitting for an hour and a half oh, and yeah, you no. take a three hour test, that's different. But if you were studying on average four or five hours a day, you, you were you were having you were getting that stamina that you needed. Yeah, that's a great point. The the real reason why why I wouldn't do a full test is because if you do a full test and then you know you do your full five sections or four sections of a test, you finish section four and then it's time to review and you're supposed to go back to section to the first section you did and remember what you were thinking when you went through um, that first you know, question 12 that you got wrong. How are you supposed to remember why you got question 12 wrong three hours ago when you're all the way at the end? So yeah, that's the big adjustment I think I made was thinking about um, studying and I, I actually have two things to say. The first one is thinking about um, like a 50-50 mix of studying and review. Like if you're gonna spend an hour studying, like half of it maybe going to doing questions and then half of it to just looking at what you did wrong, like really diving into why did I make this mistake? Because the goal is always going to be like, don't make that mistake again. And people spend so what? much time What's wrong with your answer. Yeah. Like why, why did you get this wrong? How do we make sure that if you do this again, you're not going to get the same question wrong because that's learning. One of my biggest frustrations with tu when tutoring is when a student says, well, five of them, it was just the other answer. Like they narrowed yeah. the two and it was just the other answer and i'm like well those are actually the five we should be spending our the most time on because that those are like the closest you are to getting correct but you didn't yeah. get them correct so like those are the like I, so if, if people are missing more than 15 i actually tell i know some people say review all of them i say let's focus on the first 15 first and and review those and really and before we're doing the hard ones because i just think that it's hard to do everything at once. It's like drinking water from a fire hose. But, yeah. that, but the true ones that we want to spend the most time on are the ones that you narrowed down to two. And I want you to be able to say why your answer is wrong and why the correct answer is right. And if you don't see that, if you cannot put that into words, it's not just accepting the other answer. Yeah, yeah, you really want to know. Like, well, I knew it was one or the other. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's not close enough. Uh, yeah, it's so tough. It's a really hard test. You know, I really feel for everybody out there still, still grinding away at it because it's and and the people in your life will not understand they just won't they just will not know that you're hey, really who did you talk to about the lsat my family and they hated me they were like so sick <laughs> of hearing me talk about it but um i remember one day i called my mom while i was studying and i talked to her for about like two questions for like 35 minutes and when i hung up i was like well my mom's really a gem because who sits there and listens to me explain a paradox question yeah and like that like th that was a humbling moment for me i'm like okay this is what motherhood takes <laughs> Anyways, so do you, um, was it worth it all, I guess, to wrap it up? Last More word, fun? was it was it worth it all the time you take? Are you thankful that you, um, I, maybe you, did you did you miss a cycle because of having to retake? Um, I actually did a, a master's in the middle. I went abroad and took a year off and kind of still studied. Yeah, I'm a weird, I'm a crazy person, but um, <laughs> was it worth it? Was it worth it all? I, I would that's say- a, That's a re -re crazy question. Like the master's is awesome, but was it worth not applying when you had that 154 and waiting for the yeah. 159 was it worth that extra year the extra studying are you happy where you are now well one what did I, I 161 for a cycle and then took a year off to go back with the 169 yeah there, okay, thank you for yes yeah definitely if you if you i think i think i knew in my heart that 170 was about where i think i could go and after that i just didn't really think that like even on my best days perfection past that was seeming like really kind of out of reach but I knew I could I knew I could push to 170 and I just felt it in me that like I had this in me and I wasn't going to quit and so if you feel that way whatever that number is um go for it keep pushing you you can totally do it and it pays I mean it pays off you get you get scholarships and stuff so really uh, just keep working and then you can go develop apps like Matt and then you can go develop apps like Matt <laughs>